Well, hello everyone, and welcome to a brand new Call of Duty Vanguard video. Today, I'm going to be discussing, as well as breaking down the patch notes for the most recent update in Vanguard, as well as I'm also going to be talking about the brand new Attack on Titan bundle that is going to be releasing in just about a week from now at the time you're making this video. So, with that all being said, if you guys want to enjoy this one at any given point in time, make sure you leave a like on it down below, as well as subscribe and turn on post notifications, so that way you guys will not miss any few latest and greatest Call of Duty news, class ups, intel, and so much more. So yeah, without further Further ado, let's actually dive right into it. Now, if you guys have been staying up to date with the channel, you would know that the mid-season update for Vanguard Season 1 released a little bit earlier this week, and of course, with a brand new mid-season update, in addition to just adding in new content, it also fixed a lot of the issues that we did end up seeing in Vanguard, and that is outlined in the patch notes, so let's actually talk a little bit about it, and in addition to that, I'm also going to be talking a little bit about some insight about some more content that we are going to be seeing later in Season 1, as well as some early insight into Season 2 that is going to be releasing in just about 3 weeks from now. So with that all being said, let's actually talk about the multiplayer update. So there were some stability issues that were fixed with this particular update, and they go on to state, several sources of packet burst have been identified and resolved. Additionally, several sources of multiplayer crash errors have been identified and resolved. Also, Xbox Series X players will no longer experience game crashing with CDN settings enabled. Also, playing with keyboard and mouse will no longer result in controller needed messages. So now let's actually talk about spawns. So they go on to state, spawn logic has been tuned to improve small maps with higher player counts. They also state, adjusted spawn logic for domination on dome, as well as spawns in control mode have been significantly adjusted to A. Prevent out of map spawns on Tuscan, B. Prevent spawning in the enemy's line of sight on bow cage, and C. Prevent players from spawning directly on teammates. So this honestly makes a lot of sense and is really good because if you guys have been playing some of these smaller maps, for example, DOS House or especially Shipment, with higher player counts, you will know that the spawn logic makes absolutely no sense. So luckily enough, now that the new update went live, luckily the spawns are going to be making a lot more sense and it kind of makes these maps more enjoyable and less chaotic. So with that being said, let's actually talk about weapons and equipment when it comes to bug fixes. So they go on to state, the attack slash guard dog kills now count towards Panzerfast camo challenges. The STG reptilian camo weapon challenge is now tracking bloodthirsty kills, as well as the STG predatory camo weapon challenge is now tracking multi kills. Now this is really good because ever since the start of Vanguard, the STG camo weapon challenges haven't been properly tracking, so hopefully that's fixed after this update. Additionally, the Katana Unlock Challenge is now properly tracking, as well as now the 3-line rifle can be reloaded with the ZF4 3.5x rifle scope equipped. They also addressed an issue that prevented the quote, kill an enemy while they have a spy plane active 5 times challenge from tracking in the countermeasures career challenges. Also, they addressed an issue where care packages would land out of reach when playing Armageddon on Tuscan and Doss House. Furthermore, player selected camos will now appear during the match intro sequence. Also, locked camos and attachments can no longer be swapped onto unlocked weapons. Additionally, a bug resulting in missing post-match flow has been fixed, as well as a bug resulting in the Type 100 Blueprint Thunderhead being invisible in the pre-match countdown has been fixed. And alright, so now let's take the time and talk about balancing changes for weapons and equipment here in Vanguard multiplayer. So first and foremost, the M1 Garand tactical rifle had its recoil reduced, which is pretty good in my opinion because the M1 Garand is a really solid tactical rifle in this game, however the recoil can be a bit much, so hopefully after this update, the M1 is a little bit more of a viable weapon. With that being said, the Type 99 had its aim flinch reduced, as well as the ADS time reduced. In addition to that, Sledgehammer Games said, and I quote, retain one shot kill potential for chest shots when smaller caliber ammo is used. So we started off with the M1 Garand, which is attack rifle. Then we talked about the Type 99, which is a sniper rifle. But now let's talk about the three-line rifle, which is another sniper rifle. And of course, for the three-line rifle, they reduced the ADS time. As well as for the Car 98, they changed, and I quote, retain one-shot kill potential for chest shots when smaller caliber ammo is used. And that honestly makes a lot of sense. So for the Car 98K, as well as the Type 99, the problem arose is when you were using some smaller caliber ammunition, you pretty much could not get chest shots. You need to get a headshot for your 
your weapon to be a one shot kill and that's not entirely fair especially when you're going up against weapons like the PTRS which is a semi automatic sniper rifle that can get a one shot kill pretty much no matter what so hopefully this update kind of balances that out a little bit more with that being said let's actually talk about some ammo equipment as well as kill streak changes and starting with the ammo talking about the hollow point rounds they remove damage penalties on those particular rounds which is pretty good moving on down to equipment for the stun grenade they stated and I quote reduce stun grenade damage in hardcore modes as well as they reduce how long players are affected by stun grenades and this is really good however in addition to the stun grenades they actually changed the incendiary grenade which I talked about in my last video or my last commentary video excluding my tutorial on how to unlock the well gun and as for the incendiary grenade they stated and I quote damage has been reduced so this is honestly really good the incendiary grenade is kind of a broken piece of equipment in Vanguard and is kind of annoying to go up against so hopefully it is a lot less effective now with that in mind talking about kill streaks and actually more specifically talking about the mortar barrage they change and I quote duration of mortar strike has been reduced as well as number of mortar strikes per streak has been reduced and finally they addressed an issue where mortar barrage deployment was inconsistent so now let's actually talk about perks and I'm just going to be reading them off high alert slight delay added before perk activates after being seen by an enemy dauntless gives immunity to fire and burning effects including incendiary rounds flame knot and lingering fire on the ground fortified reduces fire damage taken by 30 percent reduces excessive damage of all explosives so now let's actually talk about some of the UI changes and they are and I quote seasonal challenge menu is now present in the challenges tab as well as players will no longer experience visual rank swapping between players in private matches. Also the objective progression bar will no longer clips into reticles. Furthermore unintended distortion of MVP images have been fixed and the continuous post game level up animation when players reach prestige 3 has been fixed and of course for the store the menu navigation has been improved when viewing and toggling between bundles. So yeah, that's pretty much all the brand new changes that came with the mid-season update for Season 1. So now let's actually talk about some new features that we can expect to see in Season 2, as well as the brand new Attack on Titan bundle. Now talking about Season 2, interestingly enough, with the mid-season update for Season 1, there was a new feature that you can actually set a keybind to on the PC version of Vanguard, and that is actually the Inspect Animation feature. Of course, you cannot inspect animations in Vanguard as of yet. However, the option 2 was added in with the mid-season update for Season 1, However, unfortunately, the option isn't working as of yet, as well as you can only see that particular option on the PC version of Vanguard. However, it is very likely that the mid-season update for Season 1 kind of added the feature. However, you'll be able to actually use the feature with Season 2, which is going to be the next major update coming into Vanguard multiplayer. So just make sure to keep that in mind. Now, before I end off today's video, I want to talk about the Attack on Titan Vanguard bundle and what we know about it. So, of course, Attack on Titan is a very popular anime and in similar fashion to the 80s action heroes event that we saw back in 2021, Call of Duty is going to be doing a collaboration with them where with the brand new the Tracer Pack Attack on Titan Levi Edition bundle, you are going to be getting access to some Attack on Titan themed items. For example, the Survey Core Operator skin, the Historia Legendary Weapon Blueprint, the Titan Piercer Blueprint, as well as the Steel Cut Finishing Move just to name off a few of those items. And for those wondering, this particular bundle bundle will be costing 2400 COD points and will be releasing in exactly one week from now on Thursday, January 20th, 2022. So yeah, guys, with that said, that's going to effectively wrap up today's video. I hope you went on to enjoy it. And if you did, do not forget to leave a like on this one as well as subscribe and turn on post notifications so that way you guys will not miss any of the latest and greatest Call of Duty news, class ups, intel, and so much more. So thank you once again for watching. I've been your host, Deeper Junkle. I hope to see you in the next one.